Hello everyone. There are literally thousands and thousands of acids out there in the universe, and they're all out there donating their protons and producing conjugate bases. A small number of those acids are considered strong acids because they're really, really good at dumping their protons. They'll just dump it to anything that's around, they don't care. They have such a weak chemical bond from between the hydrogen and the anion that they just break apart 100% of the time. Most acids though are weak acids where they set up an equilibrium and they only donate some of their protons to the surroundings. Um, and that amount can vary depending on the acid. The strength or the weakness of a weak acid is often given as a Ka value. It's the equilibrium constant for the acid equilibrium set up by the weak acid with water. Ka values for weak acids cover a large range of numerical values, anywhere from 10 to the minus one, all the way down to 10 to the minus 13, you know, a whole bunch of factors of 10. You can usually find them on tables like this where they tell you their Ka values, and those are all experimentally determined. Some of you, when you look at a chart like this, start to have heart palpitations and you start losing sleep because you start wondering, how is it that chemists figure those numbers out? Well, it's actually a pretty easy process and I wanna show it to you today. It involves the titration of the weak acid in question with a strong base. And it also involves monitoring the pH throughout the course of the titration and making a graph of the curve that the pH follows throughout the titration. I've got a really cool setup here with, first of all, this little awesome stirry thingy, which saves me the trouble of stirring the entire time I'm doing the titration. I also have my burette with my sodium hydroxide solution in it and a pH meter, which is hooked up to this little monitor. And I can see that my pH is right now 4.20. In this solution, I've put a small amount of the weak acid I want to test and find the Ka4. It has a molar mass of 104.07 grams per mole. And I put a little bit of it in just a little under 100 milliliters of water. So let's go ahead and open this up. Oop, not that much. Nice steady drip. This is the graph of our titration of our weak acid. And I want you to notice a couple of key characteristics here. First, we start out with a pH of just above five. So it is acidic, but it's not terribly acidic. Uh, and that indicates that yes, we are working with a weak acid and not a strong acid. And I want you to notice that as soon as it pops up, there's a slight flattening of the curve here in this little section. And that flattening of the curve indicates a buffering action that's going on inside the beaker. Because as soon as some of our weak acid is neutralized, it actually becomes its conjugate base. And so we now have this region where we have significant concentrations of our acid left, but also significant concentrations of the conjugate base being formed all the way till we get up over to here. Now you'll notice here there's a sharp increase in pH, and that indicates that we're getting close to the equivalence point. In fact, the equivalence point is the point halfway up that steepest part of the curve, where the entirety of the weak acid has been neutralized, and now we have its conjugate base uh, only present in the, flat, in the beaker. Now notice the pH at the equivalence point I'm estimating here is a pH of 9.89. It's not seven. In fact, it's only seven at the equivalence point when you titrate a strong acid with a strong base or a strong base with a strong acid. If you titrate a strong or weak acid with a strong base, you end up with a pH higher than seven at the equivalence point because at the equivalence point, you don't have neutral water only, you have its conjugate base and that actually acts to make the solution basic. So there's our equivalence point or we're approximating it as best we can. To find the Ka of our weak acid, we need a second point on the graph, and that is the point exactly halfway to the equivalence point. All right, and so assuming my drip rate was constant the entire time, then the point halfway down the line here, I'm gonna give you a quick estimate here. We'll estimate there. 
we need the pH at the point halfway to the equivalence point. So if the equivalence point is here at around a time of 270 seconds, let's go back to the time of about 135 seconds. So that's 118. 36 is pretty good. And I have a pH there of 6.97 at a point halfway to the equivalence point. This will allow me to get the Ka of my weak acid, this point right here halfway to the equivalence point. You might be wondering, why is it that we need to know the pH at the point halfway to the equivalence point? Well, let's investigate. Here I have a equation showing the titration or the reaction of OH with the weak acid. We're keeping it very general here because this works for any of the acids. And it creates the anion, the conjugate base, and some water molecules. And just to keep the numbers simple, let's say for example, our concentration of the weak acid is 0.1 moles per liter. And we have zero of this, and we have some water molecules in the solution, but we're not gonna worry about those because they don't show up in our equilibrium expression. So let's say I add enough OH so that the concentration of this goes down to half of what it started as. So we start at point one, halfway to the equivalence point. We've titrated half of our solution, and so it is now down to 0.05 moles per liter, which means it would have gone down 0.05 moles per liter to get to there. Now because this goes down in a one-to-one -one ratio as this comes up, this would have to come up to 0.05 by 0.05 moles per liter, and it would also then have a concentration of 0.05 moles per liter. Halfway to the equivalence point, regardless of what concentration this started as, it's going to drop to half and these two concentrations will be the same. So halfway to the equivalence point, the concentration of the weak acid remaining equals the concentration of the anion or the weak the conjugate base present in the solution. Which means that if I were to plug those concentrations into the equilibrium constant expression that governs this weak acid, Because they're the same, they effectively cancel each other out from the expression. And therefore, Ka at that point is actually equal to the H3O plus concentration. So if I know what the H3O plus concentration is, I know what my Ka value is. Now we don't usually know it directly off of that because we are usually using pH meters to test what the pH is. But the pH, which is the negative log of the H3O plus concentration, if I take the negative log of the both sides, negative log of Ka, negative log of the H3O plus concentration, what I get is that the pKa of my weak acid is actually equal to the pH of the solution halfway to the equivalence point. So that is why we're so interested in the pH at the point halfway to the equivalence point, because that gives us the pKa, and by taking 10 raised to the negative pKa, I get my Ka value. So there you have it. Finding the Ka value of a weak acid involves doing a titration, monitoring the pH throughout the titration, and noting the pH at the halfway to the equivalence point part of your titration. If you can find the pH at halfway to the equivalence point, you know the pKa of your, your acid, and therefore, with a quick tap of the calculator, you can find the Ka of your acid. Easy as that. Now hopefully you'll be able to sleep better at night. You're welcome. Bye.